Hello! This is going to be a brief overview of Shopify and a demo of how to use it. First, let's look at what Shopify actually is. You may be thinking that it's just a platform for building and hosting an e-commerce website. But while that is part of its functionality, it's actually more like a central cloud-based hub for managing and synchronizing all of your sales channels, physical and online. If you choose to have a website hosted on Shopify, that will be considered one of your sales channels. If you sell from other websites, such as social media, or have a brick-and-mortar selling location, you can add those as sales channels as well. I'll have more details on that later in this video. Let's go over the different plans offered by Shopify, all of which provide you with 24-7 email and chat support. At the lowest level, we have Shopify Starter, formerly known as Shopify Lite, at $5 per month or $1 for your first three months. Unlike all other plans, it does not let you build an e-commerce website on Shopify's cloud platform. However, it does give you the ability to build Shopify's e-commerce functionality into your existing website and or into social media pages and apps, such as Facebook's Messenger. The next step up is Basic Shopify, currently $26 per month. This plan allows you to build your own fully functioning e-commerce website and blog on the Shopify platform. It also gives you the ability to generate discount codes and shipping labels, tools for fraud detection, and features for reaching shoppers who left unpurchased items abandoned in their cart. The Shopify plan, which I like to call regular Shopify, is currently $71 per month. This plan has the ability to generate some nice professional reports and to create gift cards for your store. Advanced Shopify is currently $266 per month, and it interfaces with big third-party logistics entities to automatically calculate shipping costs to the customer's location. It also offers customizable reports and allows unlimited images and videos for each product. Shopify Plus is the enterprise-level plan, which starts at $2,000 per month. Once you're signed into your Shopify store, the first thing you'll see is the home page. This will give you a checklist of setting up your store. Some tasks are necessary to get started selling with Shopify, and others are optional but recommended steps to take. Below the checklist are some buttons and links that will help you complete those setup tasks. As you can see here, there are some reminders and notifications about fulfilling orders and capturing payments, which I will talk more about later. In the top right corner is a button for the setup guide, which is the checklist shown on the home page. Clicking the button will show the same checklist in a sidebar so you can access it at any time. To show you an example, I have an unchecked item that says Add Brand Assets. I can click on it to see a more detailed description, click the button that says Add Brand Assets, and it will take me to the appropriate settings page for adding my store's logo, brand images, and colors. For now, let's go back to the home page. The bell icon is where you can view your notifications, and your name in the top right corner is where you can access more options for your Shopify account, as opposed to this specific store. Speaking of which, in the top left corner, you can flip between different Shopify stores, if you have more than one Shopify store attached to your account. On the left navigation pane, below Home, you'll see the Orders page. Let's go there. Here you can see all the orders that have been placed to your Shopify store. An automatically assigned order number, the date and time, the customer who placed the order if they created and signed into an account, which sales channel the order came from, as you can connect multiple sales channels to your store, including your online store, which is your hosted e-commerce website, or it could also be your point of sale system if you've enabled Shopify POS. The total price for the order, Payment status, which for this order is pending. Fulfillment status, which for this one is unfulfilled. The number of items ordered. And the delivery method. For example, are you shipping it or are they walking it out of your store? Since this is not a live store, I created this order as an example. The payment status is pending because I've not yet set up my payment gateway. I didn't want to move money from my bank through Shopify and back into my bank. And the fulfillment status is unfulfilled, which means I've not sent the item, which does not exist, to the customer, who is me. 
But if I click on either one of these status tags, it takes me to a page full of more in information about this order. Here is the product that I ordered from myself. If I click Fulfill Item, I can mark the order as shipped to a specific address or pass it off to a third party for shipping. Looking at the payment status of Pending, I can email an invoice with a message to the customer, and if I click Collect Payment, it will pass the order data to a payment gateway which I do not yet have set up. However, I can pretend that I handed myself $2.99 in cash, and I will mark this order as paid. Below, I can add comments and view the transaction history. Lastly, for orders, it's important to note that you can export your list of orders as a CSV file, and you can manually create an order if you make a sale outside of your Shopify system. Back in the navigation pane, you'll see pages for order drafts, which are orders you've manually created but not finalized, and abandoned checkouts, which, if you have Shopify Advanced or Shopify Plus, will allow you to automate messages to customers who add items to their cart and then don't finish the checkout process. The products page looks very similar to your orders page, as it shows a list of your products, of which I only have one. You can add a new product manually, giving it a name, description, images or videos, the sales price, toggle whether or not the item is taxable, set how much the item cost you, the SKU and or barcode number, how many items you have on hand at your various locations, how much the item weighs if it's a physical product, and very importantly, its variant options, if any, such as size or color. You can also import all this product information for all of your products in bulk using a CSV file. I won't go in too much detail about collections, but they're pretty much what they sound like. Groups of similar products which can aid in user navigation and receive different stylistic treatments such as an image to represent the group and different theme templates for displaying the products. The customers page allows you to view and manage your customer profiles which visitors can create on your online store. You can import a list of customer data from a CSV file, or you can create them manually by clicking Add Customer and entering their name and contact information. Customer profiles can allow your store visitors to log in on your online store and to view their order history and current order status. The Finances page will show you that I have sold nothing and earned nothing, but when I do, those figures will show up here. You can set up a payout account for your earnings to be deposited into, the sales tax amounts you've collected, and your current Shopify bill. I can also click this month to date button and set time-based parameters on the financial information shown. The analytics page is similar, with both financial and marketing data, such as conversion rate and which devices and social channels your store visitors are coming from. Underneath Analytics, the Reports page allows you to view and print this information in report form. Shopify Advanced and Shopify Plus plans allow you to customize the information and layout of your reports. The Marketing page shows you the same marketing date as is on the Analytics page, and it allows you to customize your marketing outreach, such as email campaigns. This is another reason for having customer profiles with their contact information. I won't go into too much detail on Shopify marketing, but the Campaigns tab underneath the Marketing page is where you can view the campaigns you've created and any user data generated by each campaign. The Discounts page allows you to generate discount codes which can be applied by your store visitors at checkout. These are great for marketing promotional purposes. Below the main navigation pages, you can see your actual sales channels. Let's look at my online store. In the top right corner, you can click to view what your e-commerce website actually looks like. Back in our merchant panel, you can see that my site is currently using the origin theme. I can click the customize button to edit the actual content of the website. For example, I will change the main header. The save button is in the upper right hand corner. To exit the editor, I will go to the upper left.
below, I can see themes that I've tried out in my theme library, and I can click Add Theme to visit the Shopify theme store. For now, I'll preview the other theme in my library, Dawn. I'll click the three dots and preview. And this is what my store would look like with the Dawn theme. As you can see below, there are plenty of free themes to try out. If you've added the point of sale channel, you can manage your store's staff members and their permissions within the Shopify point of sale mobile app, which should be installed on the mobile device you're using as a register. Shopify POS Lite is free to use with any Shopify plan, but if you're paying for Shopify POS Pro, you can add more than one in-person selling location. Below your sales channels, you see the apps section, which you can click to see your installed apps, view recommended apps for your store, or search the Shopify App Store. The App Store has a multitude of useful third-party apps, some free and some paid. Back in our merchant panel, we can wrap up this demo by browsing the settings, found in the bottom left corner. You can edit your store details, including your contact information and store name. You can manage your Shopify plan, users and permissions for your store backend, and your payment gateways. For me, it's a prompt to connect Shopify Payments, which is a free payment gateway native to the Shopify system. You can manage which of your products ship to what locations, settings for how you charge tax, your apps, and Shopify Domain Registrar. And as we've seen before, you can add your store's logo and other brand settings that can automatically populate your store theme. If you can't find something in the Shopify Merchant dashboard, you can search for it in the search bar top center. That pretty much covers the Merchant panel, and if you have any questions, please leave it below in the comments. We'd love answering those. If you want to see more Shopify and or QuickBooks content, Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. There's more where this came from, and I hope you enjoyed this demo.